Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I watched far too much television <laughs> uh, as a child. I mean, I think like a lot of people of color, uh, the biggest problem was not uh, the stereotypes of Asians, but uh, the invisibility of, of people of color, right? Uh, on the screen, on the big screen and on the small screen. So you just had this sense, right? You were being taught that, you know, if you wanted to succeed in certain areas of life, you had to be white, right? You know, uh, and if you were Asian American, you can only succeed if you went into, you know, math or science or engineering or something like that. Um, so that was very problematic because um, we just didn't see Asians on the screen except in these uh, small roles uh, or in these very stereotypical roles, right? And so you'd see, you know, the Asian bad guys, the thugs getting beat up so that, you know, uh, someone else, some other, you know, action star could be, as, be portrayed as a hero. Um, sometimes you'd have Asians as the kind of passive sidekick, you know, or who's there for comic relief. I think that was probably the most painful, right? Because, you know, when people hold stereotypes and prejudices, then it's so easy to get a cheap laugh at the expense of, of you know, that minority group, you know, uh, when you're appealing to the mainstream or the majority. And that was really painful because then it was like, well, then you can't even enjoy those shows. You can't even watch them uh, without feeling bad about yourself. Or sometimes you, when you're a child, you try to enjoy them alongside everyone else, you know, um, by, by making fun of yourself or your own people, right? Or sometimes you feel like, oh, well, thank goodness I can laugh because I'm Japanese American and they're only making fun of Chinese Americans, you know? And I think you know, that's the unfortunate thing. As kids, we all want to be accepted. We don't want to be part of that neglected, marginalized group. And these popular stereotypes have a way of, of really, really, you know, enforcing that. Or even within one group, even with, say, you know, within, uh, say, among Chinese Americans. Uh, you might have Chinese who are more assimilated and Americanized making fun of the so-called FOBs, you know, the people who are fresh off the boat, or that happens, you know, really with just about every immigrant. They try to prove that, well, we're not like the people that they're making fun of who have thicker accents and, you know, uh, still have these uh, uh, foreign customs rather than our Americanized ways of, you know, always eating, you know, McDonald's and, 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 and stovetop stuffing for dinner. Um, I think the other ones that were very uh, pernicious that, that occurred more in the 80s um, was this notion. So as Asians were being viewed as more successful in, in, in the business world uh, and in education, then you had the sort of the nerd, the Asian nerd, or, you know, or the stereotypes. A lot of movies and stereotypes of these Japanese businessmen, you know. Um, and again, it's not like one particular one would ever stick. Because if you're looking at them, you know that they're bogus and they're false. But this overall dehumanization, right, I think that's the effect. That in the eyes of mainstream society, you can never fit in as your true self. You always have to wear some kind of mask and play some kind of role if you wanted to be accepted, you know.